Hi, I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is bit shift pan. Yep, that's what we got. The idea here is from a suggestion that I saw on YouTube. I think somebody asked for this. Uh, I thank you for it if you did. Um, I've had a plugin for some time called Bit Shift Gain. And I have to be careful saying that because YouTube often thinks I'm saying a different word beginning with B, and that is a rather unfortunate thing. I'm not. I'm saying the name of a plugin. See, the deal with shifting bits is as follows. If you have math, right, your mathematical uh, storage of numbers in digital, changing the numbers changes the uh, mantissa or the exponent or both. These are things that are how a number is contained within a computer. And the more you change the numbers, the more they degrade. I build into my plugins a lot of things to address this. For instance, on anything that isn't already double precision processing, I dither to the floating point bus. It's a way that I use of making my stuff try to sound better, try to sound less digital. But there is a special trick, it's a one weird trick that you can use for the purpose of doing this digital math better. If you shift gain by 6 dB increments, what's happening is you're changing what's called the exponent of the floating point number, the way that it's stored in the computer. If you store the if you change the exponent of this number, it's shifting it in such a way that it'll become 6 dB louder or quieter. But if you do it very exactly, you can change it all day long, and it's not going to degrade the sound. All that will happen is you shift it down 6 dB, and 24 bits down or more, there is a little bit of detail that just gets thrown away, shift it back, and effectively you've got the same thing. Nothing's been altered. And that is behind a bunch of work that I've done. It's, it's a popular plugin, albeit when you talk about it, YouTube thinks you're saying a naughty word. And somebody on a YouTube video suggested that I try doing this for Pan. Here we go. It shift Pan. Sounds smooth, huh? Well, it's not. So here's the trick, this is still shifting everything. Look, there's a volume control here. That is nothing but bit shift gain. This is exactly the same as bit shift gain. So anything you do here is utterly perfectly transparent digital wise. I mean, technically, if you put it down to here, and then record it in something and then put it back, maybe it'd be a losing, but you really, you don't lose anything altering the gain this way. So what happens when we do the pan? Nothing changes until one side is now 6 dB down. Now look, 12 dB down. 
and it's the opposite side to what we're listening to, obviously. The side that we're hearing it on hasn't changed at all. And you can take it all the way down to silence, in which case we've just deleted one of the channels entirely. Put it back to the middle, and we can go over to the other side. Nothing changes. Until all of a sudden it makes a jump. Now the interesting thing about this is that when it makes that dynamic jump, bit shift gain can only operate in 6 dB increments. It has to do with how floating point values work. But a stereo sound that's panned into the center, if you pan it one click over to the side using bit shift pan, that's now a 3 dB change because you've got two elements and one of them has gone 6 dB down and the other is just the same. This is a very interesting result. It means that now we can put in things on a stereo channel, such as this is, using bet, shift, pan. Remember, you have to put the space in there, otherwise YouTube will think that you're saying a naughty word. And you can kind of pan around, but you wouldn't think that this would be terribly useful, right? because it's not granular enough. How are you going to adjust a mix if you have 6 dB increments? Somebody says, oh, can you please nudge that by uh, a dB and a half, please? There you go, 6 dB more. Oh wait, 6 dB, I mean 12, or a whole bunch. Kind of difficult to adjust a mix that way, right? If you were going to work in that fashion. But if you're using bit shift pan, positioning now does 3 dB increments. Suppose you had two tracks of that. Now you've got two channels and two instances of the synth, and if you took one of those instances and moved it over one click, you'd have one quarter of 6 dB, because 6 dB is, the, the sound is coming through four channels, and taking one of those channels from one of the instruments and pulling it down 6 dB means the total is going down by one and a half dB, and this is starting to get into the area where it's workable. So here, Check this out. I admit that... I lied, I said I was gonna throw that away. And I didn't, because I got busy working on stuff. And this is the stuff that I was working on. I'm working on many things, like for instance, look at that. I'm working on digital impressionism what you're seeing change around there is sort of my AI ex art explorations and trying to figure out how best to do that in a way that doesn't rip off individual artists and still gets the most out of what we're trying to do with creating things in this way. So that's taken some time as well. That is just that's where I got the cover art to rise. Fairly obviously that came out of AR generation, but I'm really looking to explore that more deeply. And I think I can teach people how to do it. But I've also been making this. So what are you hearing? Console Zero. That's the thing that I have been working on. And I'll tell you more about that next week when that comes out. But the final touch to Console Zero that brought it to where it needed to be 
was building the version of console, the simplified version of console where the processing that I do is the simplest forms I could possibly make it, the least processing you could possibly have. Much like how bit shift gain, I'm sorry, I said it, didn't I? I'm still going to say that there are no swears in this when I talk to YouTube about it. Um, bet shift gain doesn't touch the uh, mantissa of the individual tracks as no matter what you do with it, the individual tracks are going to be sent through as if there was no math processing done to them at all. Ultimate purity in a particular kind of way the kind of way that we have to use dithering to deal with, it completely and totally bypasses. And so I went and set up console zero in such a way that as many of the processing elements it has are also shifting bits and also don't touch the mantissa of the value. And so when you hear this complete mess that I had last week, again this week, what you hear Instead of being console 8 light that I had last time, I'm sorry, I don't have a, a AB to demonstrate for you, maybe by next week. You have every single sound running through console zero channel. So all of the gain and all of the panning is done with shifting bits. Also, all of the ultrasonic filtering is done through simple averaging. So this one, you kind of have to do 96K or so, because if you try to do that one at uh, 1X, it's going to be dull as hell. And it's also not as perfect of a aliasing reduction, but you know, he's... Mantissa. What can I tell you? I'm working on stuff. I'm working really hard on stuff. And what you have this week is bit shift pan that's going to be part of console zero when it comes out, but you can fool around with bit shift pan right now. And hopefully as I get further things together, I can get back into music making and stuff. I mean, granted I'm fooling around with the uh, AI art and studio building, all manner of things. I've been capturing uh, classic records because one thing that I had initially talked about was continuing my explorations into these uh, plate reverbs and the chamber that didn't actually work out like the Abbey Road chamber, but is a big crazy noise. It's been my plan to also try to do a version of console that sounds and acts like the famous TG1234 console that Abbey Road, Dark Side of the Moon, All Things Must Pass, etc. were done on. Now there's a lot more work that needs to go into that, but I've done some of the uh, work involved in it, such as capturing my vinyl records in the highest quality possible, which also meant fiddling with my record player and a bunch of, you can't like capture at four times speed or whatever. It's going to take the amount of time that it takes to listen to the record. But I got all of that down. I can't show it to you because none of that stuff you can really play on streams. And then I discovered that the classic, um, Oh God, what is it? The Trident, the Trident Day Range console. There's a wide gamut of classic records that were done on Trident A range consoles from David Bowie Station to Station or Ziggy Stardust to, let's see, Russia's Permanent Waves, Devo's Duty Now for the Future, Michael Jackson's Off the Wall. All of these came off of Trident Day Ranges. And a lot of that stuff people get to react to on YouTube. So I could put together uh, study sessions where we listen 
to what those records sounded like because they had all of them except for, I believe it was Russia's Moving Pictures. And it's not actually certain that that was uh, tried in day range. I think it's possible that tracks like albums like Synchronicity and Signals were actually off of an SSL that the uh, Lou Studio studio uh, added around that time. But there's this wide gamut of classic records that I had on vinyl and that were done on an A range. So it's study time. It's time to start making the sounds of this classic analog stuff. And it's time to start documenting how you get into that place where you can make that kind of music and those kinds of sounds, but in the box. I've chattered long enough. I will get back to work, but I'll talk to you later. All of this work is supported by my Patreon. I rarely mentioned that, but as long as I'm remembering it. Um, I'll see if I can't be more visible. I don't know whether I can be more visible or not. Um, I'm doing the work regardless. And hey, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.